Podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to Zero Pucks Given, the UK ice hockey podcast. We're in partnership with the Hockey Art Co, hockey clothing for hockey people, worn by the best and hated by the rest. Listeners to the Zero Pucks Given network can get 10% off of everything site-wide at hockeyartclothing.co.uk. Just use the code ZP10. We're also in partnership with Manscaped, male grooming products redefining the gentleman around the world. If you use the code Zero Pucks 20 you get 20% off and free shipping on everything from manscaped.com. We are also part of the Sports Social Podcast Network, the largest sport podcast network in Europe, and we're absolutely delighted to be a part of it. This is episode 118. We've, uh, we've done the roundup. This is where we're going to catch up with one of the players from the Britain division. And this week, he's coming off the back of uh, scoring a hat-trick this weekend, so it's a bit of a bittersweet weekend, as his side did end up on the losing end of the Welsh Cup. We're catching up with Cardiff Fire's Danny Williams. Danny, how are you doing today, mate? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? I'm really well, thanks. Uh, let's start with the weekend, then. I mean... As I said, pretty much bittersweet. The game in itself was absolutely bonkers. Uh, but you, you come away with a hat trick yourself. How, how did the game go out, go out for you on, on Saturday? Uh, so the first period, we we come out flying. We um, you know we got our first two goals pretty much back on back, um, and then we had a, a, a play which I scored on, which was you know it was pretty like you know everyone was fired up. We were just pumping and putting the puck in the net. Um, we went 4-0 four, four up at the end of the first period, which was, you know, fantastic. We were all going into the room, you know, music on, buzzing. Um, then second period came and, the, you know, the Dragons, obviously, they had a, probably a really good team talk <laughs> mm. because they come out flying, um, making some good plays. And, you know, ultimately they, you know, they tied it up. Um, I think it was 5-4 coming to the end of the second period. Um, then the third period came, you know, we, we knew we needed to sort of, you know, put a shift in because, like, obviously more more so for the Welsh boys, but as a, a team, we wanted to win some silverware. Um, and, yeah, we, you know, we we did our best to um, sort of put up a fight. We, um, you know, we let in a few goals late in the period, which uh, put them up to about 10 goals. Um but we we made a final push at the end, you know. We we scored a few goals at the end, which um, you know it, it feels good when you come together as a a brand new team with you know a lot of young talent on the team, and we all sort of come together and you know we put nine goals past them. Um, so you know, hats off to the lads for that. We didn't give up, that's for sure. Yeah, well, fourteen in total, obviously with the five five. Yeah. In the first yeah. leg, I mean, you obviously you had last year at Oxford City Stars, and we'll go back and go through. Um, your playing career, but playing against a team from from the North Division is is the style different? Do they play a different way, different style of hockey? Yeah, um, they they have a lot of young young players, which they seem to be you know flying out there. They had one guy, um, he had a cage on, must have been like seventeen or something, and he was pulling off these moves and you know flying around the ice and stuff. So they definitely got a a really good development program going on, um, and obviously with the import and things they have there is, you know, they're a really strong side. Um, I wouldn't compare them to a, a Stratton team, though, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. Yeah, no. No, I, I mean, you've you've come across Stratton once already this year, and then you've got them this weekend coming as well. Yeah. The fixture yeah. hasn't been massively kind to Cardiff, has it, for the first year back in the NIHL 1? No, I mean, it was always going to be difficult for Stratton. Uh, you know, they're a really strong team. You know, they've got pretty much every attribute of a... Uh, what a hockey player needs. Um, they're really tough to play against. Their systems, you know, they're really good and they find space on the ice that doesn't seem to be there. Um, it is always tough playing them, but I think, you know, as the season goes on and, you know, the boys get a little bit more experience in this league, I think we're going to we're gonna do quite well. Yeah. They're averaging 12 goals a game at the moment as well, Stratton. <laughs> it's bloody horrifying. Yeah, it's, 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 it's insane. But they're, they're a really strong team, and they obviously deserve it. They're putting in the work. Yeah. 
How have you found life in Cardiff then so far? Is it is it a lot of travelling from home and and the arena and stuff like that? How's it all sort of digging on? Yeah, so I, I'm based in Swindon, so I you know I, it's about an hour and a half down the uh, down the M4. Um, me and Ian Spridgen usually uh, share share car rides, so it's not yeah. too it's not too strenuous. Um, we we go up sort of once a week, and then obviously for the games at the weekend. Um, but it's it's really welcoming, like you know Ellis uh, Ellis Shepherd's a great guy, great coach. Um, he seems to know what he's doing, and yeah, the, the team are great. Also, they got a lot of young guys in there. I've got uh, you know Brock and Evans, the uh, the goaltender. He made us these little uh, bracelets that we got on and things. Dan the man. <laughs> oh, so he's kind of like nicknamed you all and gave you all bracelets. Yeah, he made a. I think he made a TikTok about it or something. Um, He's yeah, he's a good kid. They're, they're all very welcoming, and they got like you know proper good personalities, which makes it easier to sort of transition into the team. Yeah, and I mean from what I've seen out on their socials, and uh, Shep has been providing his coach's thoughts to the podcast as well. They seem to have taken you you in as well. Are they kind of with your experience in this league? Are they kind of looking at you as a as a figurehead, one of the more senior members? Um, I'd like to think so. Luckily, I'm only fourth oldest this year, which is which is nice. But um, yeah, it's, it seems like you know they they think I can do a job, and you know I, I'm really enjoying myself on the ice at the moment. And you know I'm only going to improve throughout the year, and I'm hoping I can just keep doing a job for them, basically, you know, keep plugging away. Was there uh, obviously? Leaving Oxford from from last year and Swindon returning in into this level was was that ever an option for you staying in Swindon? Um, not none of them contacted me, but um, you know you never know for the future. I sort of played all my juniors at Swindon, and before I went to Canada when I was younger, I sort of um, you know I always played out of Swindon, so yeah. it, you know it it wasn't an option this year. I was kind of set on you know something completely new, something that I could build with um you know maybe get a little bit more playing time and you know show what i can actually do out on the ice yeah uh, maybe in the future but as it stands right now i'm i'm pretty happy where i am yeah i think that's quite a good sign actually of uk hockey players is they don't mind that little bit of traveling to have a better playing experience which i think the fans then really appreciate yeah it's just for me, uh, it's it's always about playing, like you know, actually getting playing time, being able to show what you can do, and I love I love the sport as well. I've been playing since a young age, so every time I get out there, it's just you know, I'm enjoying myself, which is nice, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, it has to be that way. I mean, you know, I've spoken to certain guests. I spoke to Brett Massey last last week. You know, he 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 said, uh, sorry, not last week, week before last. He said he had that year where he kind of fell out of love with the game and, and was wondering why he was, you know, turning up to practice at half nine at night and weekends all on games. So if you've got the love and, and you sort of stick at it, you know, then that's... And again, the fans can really see when the players have got the love and they, they feed off that as well, I think. Yeah, it's, it's a great feeling. It's just something that brings you away from normal life, I guess, because, you know, we're all, all working and have other responsibilities outside of hockey. So it's it's a great escape and... As you said, fans are brilliant. They make you feel very welcome. And, you know, when when you put your team on the board, that's a, an extra good feeling to add to the basket, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Canada then. You, you sort of mentioned going out there as a kid. Was that Were you out there particularly long? Did you get any sort of camps in out there? Yeah. So I basically when I was, I think, 10 or 11 years old, I, um, I used to go to the Anglo-Czech hockey school quite a lot. Um, just to get sort of an experience of European hockey and, you know, build my skills throughout the summer. And, um, yeah, I basically got scouted from the Anglo-Czech Hockey School when I was 11 to go over to somewhere called Harrington College. Yeah. Um, it's based in Quebec, sort of the French province. Um, but I stayed out there for four years um, playing like a mixture of Bantam AAA, midget AAA, and I was sort of heading towards junior hockey. Um but I came home after the fourth year, um, and my best mate passed away, basically. Um, so I sort of hung up the skates for a few years after that. Um, but, yeah, that's that's pretty much where I did most of my sort of development and things like that. Well, that must have been quite difficult to deal with at, what, 15, 16 at the time? Yeah, I mean, he, he played uh, English hockey. We His name was Jack O'Donnell. He was, uh, he was a good kid. Um, 
we went to a conference weekend and then shortly after he sort of had an accident passed away which was a shame um but yeah since since sort of then i um i hung up the skates for a little bit and then decided to sort of you know reopen those bridges and see what i could do basically mm. did, i suppose did that actually did that mentally help you deal with it i i had quite quite similar sort of tragedies with i played football as a teenager and and lose, lost a couple of friends and, and teammates in, in car accidents. And I, I, I did find that I kind of wanted to step away, but the minute you step back, you kind of almost feel like uh, it helps the grieving process because it's, as you say, that distraction. Yeah, I mean, we were line mates um, for a lot of years and we saw, we won nationals and things like that together. So it was, you know, um, it didn't feel right being on the ice when he wasn't there. So I decided to take a step back just for my own well-being, if anything. Um, and then it just turned into a really long break, basically. I'd sort of go on the ice here and there. And, you know, because my, uh, my dad plays hockey, so I'd sort of jump on his rec sessions every now and then just to get a little bit of ice in. And light it up, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you, know, you know how it is, you know. Just uh, just touching the ice is, is enough sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's looking around going, who's this ringer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I go on the um, Swindon Rec sessions quite a lot because I know some of the boys and they sort of, you know, they were all, uh, every week I'd go on the ice of like, oh, are you going to get back into league yet? Or, you know, you're still taking your holiday sort of thing. <laughs> so I owe a little bit to them for getting me back into it. Did you ever have any involvement with the OHA that was around Swindon? Um, so... I didn't because when I when I come back it was sort of being made um, to be a thing. Uh, I wish I were, was about for it because uh, I think Ryan Aldridge was coaching down there and he's a you know he's a very good coach. Um, so and all of the OHA boys that came out of the system you know they're all flying so yeah they obviously did something right. Yeah, it seems that they're doing actually something similar in Cardiff now with the Canucks. Do you guys have any kind of involvement with them at all, training crossovers or little little scrimmages? Do you know what? I, w- I wish we could. For some reason, um, there's, they don't really work together. I, obviously, this is my um, my first year being in Cardiff, so I don't know the uh, like the lay down of things. But we don't seem to, you know, intertwine as much as I thought maybe it would. Mm. But what I think doing? what you've got, I mean, you've got the Devils yourselves and the Canucks all out of that rink. Yeah, that would make perfect sense as a as a pathway, wouldn't it? Really? Yeah, I mean, I've uh, I've seen what Trevor does, and he's really good at what he does. You know, he's got all that hockey knowledge, and I think you know if he if if they could branch out and you know work with the Fire and do a pathway to the Devils, I think that would really sort of you know supercharge Welsh hockey. That's for sure. Mm. Do, uh, do the Fire have much sort of support with the Devils? Do you, do you guys get along and see Elite League even when you can? Um, not that I'm aware of. Obviously, I, I don't know all, all the relationships of the Fire and the Devils. But you know, I, when I was a kid, I used to sort of watch the Devils and things like that. And like we always used to come up to Cardiff for like Southwest trials or you know Southwest sessions and things like that. So like all these old rinks that we used to go to as well, like Bracknell. I remember Bracknell going there for conference and things like that. Bays and Stoke. It's a shame they're all like sort of moving on a little bit. Yeah, losing Bracknell was, I mean, was astonishing really to lose an Olympic pad like that down down in that area. And now Basingstoke, obviously, hopefully being repaired rather than yeah. lost for good. But we do have Ozone down there now. Have you ever done any training with Danny down at Ozone? Yeah, well, not not with Danny himself, but um, they did those sort of pro sessions, didn't they, last summer? And I'd sort of jump on the ice few of those which was good fun like the ice is good down there and it's it's good for like little battles in the corners because it's, it's not very long is it but no it's a it's a three on three pad isn't it yeah it's perfect like it's it's amazing what they do down there as well especially with a little shooting pad out the front like if you're waiting to go on you can sort of rip a few yeah it's a little shooting range there isn't it yeah it's, it's a cool little setup it's a shame we never had these things when i was a bit younger but like the the future's looking bright for the younger ones, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully. And as we said earlier, you know, we're not entirely sure of what the Cardiff pathway is, but there seems to be a lot of players from this level and the junior level below that are actually getting their shot. Yeah, um, we, 
which is well deserved because some of them, you know, they're all trying these, you know, new things that they see on TV and things, you know, and I've played against some of these young boys in, in Div 1 and they're absolutely flying. So all like fair play to them. They're in the, the prime sort of age to get, get things done, aren't they? Yeah, so it is, it's a young man's sport now, isn't it? These <laughs> yeah. 16 and 17 year olds chirping everybody. <laughs> yeah, flying around and us oldies are sort of chasing them. <laughs> <laughs> so from a, I mean, so far obviously in South One, you've not really played that many games as yet. What's the sort of plan for Cardiff this year? Have, have they kind of looked at the table and thought, look, we can finish here or here? Well, um, I think uh, Shep had a sort of an idea at the start that, you know, we'd like to at least come middle table if, if we can, you know, as a fresh team, you know, we, we're setting a goal of mid table, so we've got something to work for because, you know, a lot of these teams in this league are very established and, you know, very strong, like there's not really a mega weak team in this league, I, I would say, like everyone's got something to bring to the table. Yeah, I mean, do you think you'd be using your obvious geographical advantage that some teams may have coach legs in the first period <laughs> I'm hoping so I think <laughs> if they have bus legs we can come out flying in the first you know and then and then, you know sort of defend them for the rest of it maybe <laughs> and we'll get stuff done but I, I don't know I think we've um, like Shep's moving a few things around and trying new things in training you know so I think you know give us a few more games and I think we'll be we'll be ready to sort of fly around and put some pucks in the net. Yeah. What difference does that make to you as a player, having a player coach as opposed to just a head coach who's not on the ice during the games? Um, I think it's more beneficial, to be honest, because he's out there on the ice, you know, with us and he's sort of experiencing, you know, other teams and how they come at us. And, you know, he has like first-hand sort of, knowledge on what's going on out there and I think he's very um like he's spot on with his video reviewing and you know picking up mistakes and with his system so I think if there was anyone to sort of you know lead the way it would be Shep he's, he does a good job yeah he, he has he has agreed to come on here at some point this week so uh, has he? <laughs> rather yeah he's uh obviously providing his coaching thought coach's thoughts week in week out but yeah he has agreed to come on for an episode at some point yeah nice the, uh, obviously, your last year at Oxford, it was a bit of a, I'm going to say turbulent year for, for Oxford last year. <laughs> um, you know, they, you know, good import signings, obviously the, the media frenzy behind having Petr Cech, ha- had a really experienced guy doing the social media that really increased the uh, kind of media output that the club was putting in. But it just didn't seem to click. Did you yeah. know what the problem was there last year? Uh, to be honest with you, I... I... There's there's a lot of you know things that sort of didn't work out you know I, I don't want to come on and badmouth the club at all but like we had all the all the right guys to do a job but it, you know with lines changing each week and our coach leaving throughout the middle of the season I just think as a team our morale was really low. Um, you know, may, maybe we you know, needed something to sort of bring us up or uh, maybe going out for a team day or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I just didn't, it didn't really feel like a team setting. Like, you know, I, I'm only speaking on sort of my personal view. Um, but like I sort of injured my ankles last year. I tore both my tendons on the outside of my ankles. Um and I had to take the rest of the season out because of it. And there was no sort of follow up to see it, you know, to check up on, on me as a player. And that for me is probably the most important thing that I look for that is, you know, every individual on a team should be looked after equally, you know, mm. but not just as a player as well. I mean, what a lot of these clubs can't forget. And, and I know a lot of them are quite good at it is that you're not just a player, you're also a person. And, <laughs> yeah, and missing hockey through injury can be quite mentally troubling. Yeah, I mean, on on top of that, it's like you know we do have life outside of hockey also. So yeah, like, yeah, you work or whatnot. You could be, yeah, you might end up not being able to work because of injury. I know a lot of the clubs have good insurances and benevolent funds and whatnot. Um, we've had a few, you know a few players already this year that have suffered quite quite bad injuries. But it's it's something I, I discussed with Nick Rothwell when he was on the podcast last year that. 
I, I had to finish playing football due to a serious injury. Yeah. And it literally drove me to drink. Yeah, and, it's, it's... And, like, it's, and I was the manager of the club at the time, so no one was reaching <laughs> out to me, because it was me at the top, so it's... <laughs> it's one of those things, isn't it? Like, if, if you get injured and you can't play the sport, like, obviously that's, you know, again, only speaking for myself, like, being out of hockey is, like, horrible. Like, mm. you just feel like you, you're not, you don't have any place, and you know, without it, it's sort of, you know, a bit miserable. Like, you know, you haven't got that um, games to look forward to in, in the weekend and the training. In, you know, uh, you know, you do your best to sort of show up when you have an injury, but it's just not, it's not the same, is it? No. And, uh, and so, someone from Oxford who I know thought a great deal of you. Uh, he wants to know who the who the better eighty eight was. Is it you? Yeah. Or is it... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't think I know who that was. To be fair. <laughs> That's uh, Shane Moore, isn't it? That is your former GM, Shane Moore. Yeah, he's. Um, I, I've known Shane a long time, and he's uh, he's a great a great guy. He's good support for myself. Um, he's good friends with the family. Um, but if I had to answer, I, I, I'd say I'm going to be the better 88. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're not going to age you because you are only 30. You're not. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're not uh, 36 as you would be if you were born, or maybe even 37. You're born in, uh, in 88. So where's 88? Yeah come from uh so my number eight was taken so i just thought two eights <laughs> <laughs> just as that yeah as simple as that you know um i couldn't have my number eight which i've had since a kid so I, you know i had to get 88 this year but you know two eights are better than one i suppose <laughs> and uh we can see by your t-shirt that you uh you're on the dark side you're a black hawks fan yeah where that yeah. come from um, so my my dad's a strong Blackhawks fan. He has been since I was a kid, and I sort of grew up watching Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves and things like that. So, like, I think that's that's just it, to be honest. Like, just their gameplay was, you know, it's like, you know, two peas in a pod. They always knew where they were, they were, and you know, Patty Kane with the little hands and things like that. I just think things like that really motivate you to carry on to see how far you can sort of push. Yeah. That's that's why I like him. The yeah. um, was it was it your dad that got you playing in the first place? Yeah, so yeah, he got me in skates from three years old. So uh, been skating around doing roller hockey. Um, we used to play out on the basically the playground in a school where we live, and like sort of Shane and a lot of the Swindon boys would come around, and so we'd have sort of five on five roller down at the down at the playground and oh, things awesome. like that. Yeah, so we've sort of just been grinding it out, like, since young, to be honest, all of us. It's been really, really good fun. And my dad, you know, still to this day, he works on technical things with me and he comes up with these little contraptions that he makes in his in his shed, like. And, you know, I think when I was, like, eight years old or something, he'd come out with this big 4 by 4 bit of timber and he'd cut little pieces on the bottom and it, he made it so you'd have to put a ball underneath the the timber to do stick oh, yeah. and things like that and we still use it to this day like on the shooting pad and things like that he's just um you know he's always had hockey book in his hand he's always like fil- uh, hockey films like the slap shots and things and obviously he does play ice himself um yeah he's he's just such a supportive guy and he he loves the game just as much as I do um, so it's good to have someone with the knowledge like that to guide you through a sport. Yeah, yeah, that is terrific. So you said you, you're doing your stuff um, all through Swindon, and then you did. I, I was having a little look through your elite prospects earlier. Yeah, and uh, at least elite prospects has burned me on, on more than one occasion. So I will double I will double check the numbers with you. Yeah, there was one particular year at Swindon. 22-23, Swindon Wildcats 2 when they were in the NIHL 2. 23 games, 30 goals, 18 assists. <laughs> is, that, yeah. is that correct, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> what were you drinking that year? Oh, I don't know, mate. I had some go-go juice that year, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just, uh, I had a season at Oxford where I got, I, I sort of broke my collarbone and dislocated my shoulder. Um, and they uh, they didn't sign me the following year, so I had a bit of you know, a bit of fire in my belly. I was like, I'm not going to let this get me down. And yeah, I obviously come back to Swindon for that year and just, yeah, we had a good team, you know, like like James Hounsome and 
Aidan Lee and, you know, little Alfie Druitt running around and Bobby Reagan. We just had a, a solid sort of unit of guys. Um, and the room was really good and we sort of went to every game, you know, thinking we're going to try and smash these guys. Like, and yeah, just, I found the net quite a lot. Um, <laughs> which was, you know, a couple of them were just little dumps in from the red line, but, you know, I'll take them. <laughs> no, they, all, they all count. They all count. Yeah. Do you think it may makes it a little bit, I'm not going to say easier, because I don't think any of it's easier, but obviously the NRHL too, they only have playing each other home and away once rather than twice. So there's the fixtures are not as compacted. There's a bigger gap. Do, do you think that, is that more conducive to playing well for longer, or do you need the more games quickly to get into a rhythm? Um. I'd say it's a bit of a 50-50. Like, sometimes you can go weekends where you have no games and things like that. And, you know, obviously there's no better training time than ice time. So I think it was a bit flat, maybe. But on the upside, yeah, you can perform at 100% all year, no problem. Um, um, you're getting so much rest. Like, um, But it's obviously way better to have more games because, you are you know, you get into a flow and, you sort of, you know, get going easier, I guess, rather than having to wait for a game. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. There's there's also a little bit of a disparity in your penalty minutes. As a right. youngster, you've got quite a few, but as a, <laughs> as a senior, you've been you've been quite well behaved. And yeah, I, I guess you sort of. Um, I sort of like to. I'd rather put the puck in the net than have, have a fight on the ice these days. I think. <laughs> Where when I was younger, you know, it was sort of a dump in and four check kind of hockey on it so yeah I've sort of calmed down over the years and I I'm more enjoy the uh, skillful side of <laughs> the, the game now well it seems to become a, I think it's a frustration isn't it now that especially if you take a frustrating penalty that where you know you think it might be accidental or you don't agree with the call and then you realise you put your team like in the shit for two minutes. <laughs> it can be quite frustrating. More, I suppose, when you're younger, everyone's learning, aren't they? So it's yeah, you're sort of equal footing when you're younger. You can get away with a few more things, whereas like yeah, when you're a bit more relied on as an adult, so it's, it'd be unprofessional, I guess, to and a bad example to the younger ones on the team. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I, do, I know it genuinely affects the players sometimes. I know that. Um, I mean, I, most people know that, that listen to this. I'm a Chelsea fan. In their defeat to Solent on Saturday, Alan Mack took like penalty after penalty after penalty. Yeah. And, and when it was kind of pointed out afterwards, he was he just wasn't happy about it. And you know, he's, he's now the head coach at Romford Junior, so he's got that responsibility as well yeah. as being the captain of Chelsea. And as I said earlier, it's you just got to remember that you guys are people as well. And yeah. <laughs> you, and playing the sport that you love, you're going to get upset when you take lots of penalties. It's not like you're doing it on purpose. It's just yeah. part of the game. I think that's just his passion speaking there more than anything. You know, it's frustrating like, when it doesn't go your way. And you, and when you're passionate about the sport, you, know, it could get a bit, you can get a bit riled up, can't you? It's oh, just, yeah. Just how it goes. <laughs> There's some players, I mean, and Lackey is definitely one of them, where the fuse is phenomenally short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I can't, I can't comment too much. I'd call it passion. He's obviously you know, passionate about the game and likes it a bit rough and tumble. Yeah. You know, everyone's got their different playing styles, which is, is a really unique thing about the sport, I'd say. Yeah, as indeed. If you, if you think you've changed yours then as you've gone on, as you said, you're a bit more pe- likened to get a penalty as a junior, but as you've grown up, you'd rather do the skill. Yeah, I mean, uh, this really is easy. I just like putting the puck in the net or at least, you know, like, getting into the zone and making a good play, a good pass to create something. It's just, it feels good to put your team up or, you know, to, you know, just to be a, a force out there to be reckoned with, I guess. Like, it's it's a really good feeling, like, to be needed in a squad. So I'd, I'd rather sort of be that way than be, be sat in the bench all game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't ask you for your favourite play or shot type, so I don't want no one scouting from this. <laughs> uh, what favourite player from this league? I know no, your, your favourite play yourself or, or your shot type that you go for. Oh, no, Wouldn't uh, anyone scouting from it and stopping uh, it? Everyone knows I, I'm a shoot for a defenseman type of guy. Yeah. <laughs> give the uh, give the keeper the little the little blocker. Yeah, that's it. You know, just sort of pull it pull it behind the D man so it blocks the line of sight and then just rip it from there. 
Chase rebound. As you brought up players there, I mean, players that you've played with, have you got a favourite player that you've ever played with? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, I really like playing with uh, James Hounsome, to be fair. He's he's really skillful and quite quick. Um, you know, so following him around is quite fun because he's sort of zigzagging through everyone and you're just like, oh, have you done that then? <laughs> I call him Twinkle Toes. <laughs> But yeah, no, I I can't really think of of that to be honest. Um, can't really say. No, have you got a, a nemesis then, one you've played against that every time you come up against it, you're like, oh god, not again. Uh, do you know what? There's actually um, a couple guys in this league that I was in Canada mm. with, like Ben Russell and Justin Robinson. Yeah. Um, so obviously, you mm. know, when you're going against these boys that you sort of played with when you were younger, um, you kind of want to. You kind of want to sort of show them what you can do still, you know, have a bit of friendly competition. Yeah. Uh, and then at the end of the game, it's all smiles, isn't it? <laughs> it does tend to be. You know, it's one of my favourite things about the sport. It's, it's always been one of my favourite things about about boxing and, and most sort of combat physical sports is that once the game is done, then it's it's all about respect. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like a, it's a sports thing, isn't it? Like, we, you know... We, you go go to war and then come out and have a beer afterwards. I think it's like it's, it's a sign of respect, and it? it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we we had a, a few questions come in on on the Instagram. I'm still technologically quite inept, so I, I'm sure I do miss some of these. So yeah, by all means, people, if I have missed your, your question, I am sorry. Um, there was one from Martin Zamelis, uh, which we have covered. He asked why Cardiff over Swindon. Um, we kind of said you wanted you fancied something a little a little bit different. Yeah, that's it. I, Shep spoke to me and it was sort of like a, you know, a definite thing. And I like being part of new new environments and sort of travelling around and experiencing different type of hockey and different coaching. So it's yeah. nice to play out of a, a big arena as well. You know, really nice ice, nice arena and a great team. So it was the right choice, I suppose, for this year. Like all the boys are just so welcoming and, you know, they put a shift in on the ice. So I don't really want to be anywhere else for now. Yeah. Has the yeah. fire got their own dressing room, or do you use the devil's one? Uh, we, we've got our own dressing rooms, yeah. They've got, I, I think, four or five extra ones other than the, the devil's ones. So I think the devil's ones are sort of out of limits for us. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose it's probably all um, signed and everything like that for them, isn't it? Yeah, don't want to go put shower cream in their, in their skates or anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, we've done, we've done Morsey's one regarding the 88. Uh, this is a really good question. Alice Clark, have you got a game day non-negotiable? Something you absolutely have to do on game day? Uh, yeah, I've got a few things. Uh, so left skate, left glove, left leg pad. Um, so always the left one first. And I always touch the blue line before before I get going. Yeah, that's it. Is your, is your meal always the same? Yeah, I have um, pancakes with bacon and ma- uh, Canadian maple syrup. Um, oh, yeah, and I, and I get a, a rice box with some vegetables and a, a chicken breast. I have that before the game, and then um, just load up on the sort of electrolyte drinks and things like that just before. Yeah, and um, sort of does me well. Yeah, I said the, the whole pancakes and bacon with syrup thing. I, I got my daughter into that really young, and she <laughs> absolutely loves it. And she does because we've got a few Tim Hortons over here now, haven't we, in the UK? Yeah, we do, yeah. You Good old in bits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, when are we going to get to Canada, Dad? When are we going to get to Canada? <laughs> yeah. I, I always, I, my, my wife's got Raynards in her hands, so she gets really, really cold really, really quickly. Yeah. If I'm ever going to take her to, to Canada, and Toronto is one of my favourite cities on earth, it'll have to be in the summer. But then I'm like, I'm not going to Toronto when it's not hockey season. That's just... No. you got to go there in the winter. <laughs> just so you'll I... have to get her some mittens. <laughs> going to take my daughter I think. yeah do it honestly it's, we'll it's just, amazing over there yeah we'll just eat syrup and bacon I, I think she'll absolutely love it so uh, <laughs> yeah. have it three meals a day <laughs> <laughs> but these are so much cheaper I know when my wife and I were in New York she was really struggling to find fruit whereas I just piled up on all like pancakes and bacon and scrambled egg and sausage and it's easy and it's cheap and it's there she's like looking at me like now what do all the Americans are massive I can't find any healthy food <laughs> Yeah, it all tastes good as well. And you can't miss out the maple syrup. That's like the cherry on top, isn't it? Oh, no, it's unreal. I tell you what, I had it on the other day on French toast. Oh, 
Lovely. I haven't had French toast for so long, and it just came into my. I was cooking breakfast, and I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm going to make. I'm going to make some French toast." Yeah. And that just it made it also taste like Canada. Just that that French toast with syrup. You can almost smell the air. <laughs> yeah, the, the crisp coldness. <laughs> yeah. As an autumn brown maple leaf flows up to my window. Oh, mate. Man, it's like I'm there. I can feel it. I can smell it. So we've got another cut. I've got a couple of questions from some of your teammates, I believe. <laughs> Great. So uh, it's coming, just coming up with their Instagram usernames. Uh, so Bro Eva Forty Two, favorite rookie goalie in the fire. Oh, that's it's got to be Brock in there, yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's the uh, he's the goalie that got me this bracelet. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it's got to be Brock in it. <laughs> And a J Quinn eighty one. Who's the biggest stud on the Cardiff Fire team? Oh, the biggest stud. Oh, I'm gonna have to say Jasper. Jasper Quinn. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the answer he was after. Yeah, he's he's a good old he's a little stud, and he? he's got that quiff going. Not a bad looking bloke, because yeah, I've got to say Jasper. <laughs> Is there any of the guys in the team that speak Welsh? Yeah, there's a there's a few of them actually. There's um, you and Davies, Spud. He can speak a little bit of Welsh. Uh, I believe uh, Ellis can speak Welsh as well. And uh, the rookie, Louis, Louis James. Yeah. Pretty sure he's he's a fluent Welsh speaker as well. I was saying to uh, to Mike Clancy, the D-side coach, that there was quite a lot of media coverage for the Welsh Cup. Um, yeah. Including some of the Welsh TV channels. So that was... It's quite cool to hear it kind of spoken. But do they talk about... Do they talk Welsh in front of the English speakers? So that you, you might think they're talking about you. So, well, no, they they don't speak it in the change room, but, you know, wouldn't put it past them to have a little cheeky conversation on the side because <laughs> it, it just goes over our heads. Like, us English boys were like, oh, what what did you just say? <laughs> well, I, was, I was considering doing the intro for this this episode in Welsh, but I think I'll save that for Shep's one. Yeah, I'd save it for Shep's one because I, I'm English. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, anyway, Daddy, thank you so much for joining me, mate. It's been a real pleasure to speak to you and uh, talk through your career and get to know you a little bit. Uh, when you're in Chelmsford, like, it's very unlikely I'm going to be able to make Cardiff away this year. So when you're in Chelmsford, I will come and give you a fist pump. Say hello, mate. We'll have a self. Sounds good, mate. Thank you for having me on. You are more than welcome, mate. All, all the best for the rest of the season. I really do hope it goes well for you. And we'll see you soon. Cheers, Cheers mate. See you soon. A massive thank you to Danny Williams for joining me on the podcast. Uh, first Cardiff Fire player, of course, to come on. As I said, during that interview with Danny uh, Ellis Shep, the uh, player coach, he'll be coming on a little later this year. So we'll, uh, we'll save the Welsh intro for then and see see just how bad that I do at it. Uh, so, yeah, really, thank you for listening. That I really did enjoy that chat with, Dan- with Danny, a real top lad. Uh, looking forward to meeting him when he comes down to Chelmsford. Uh, so thank you for listening. You can catch Zero Pucks Given on all of the social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, X, Threads, Snapchat, Absolutely everywhere so that you don't miss a thing. Of course, not just a podcast. It's your one-stop shop for everything Britain Division with your fixtures, of course, coming out in video form, stats, star men for, for the teams that are playing on the upcoming weekend. So much stuff on the socials and your uh, your likes and your shares are really, really appreciated. Next week's episode, then, we'll have a roundup of all of the fixtures that are happening this weekend. Of course, the video for them will be out on Friday. And then we'll, after we've rounded up, Next week, we've got Chelmsford Chieftains, Dylan Dix, who's uh, not long back from the Ball Hockey World Championships in Italy. So really, really good to talk about that, plus his move to Chelmsford and how everything's going for him now that he is in Essex. Thank you once again for listening. I'll catch you next time. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.